What's up, YouTube? Um, continuing more thoughts on the transmission idea. Just to keep conversation simple, I'm running a, a 12 to 72 right now, which is effectively a 6 1 gear ratio. And uh, it's okay, top speed is alright, but I'm kind of still wondering what would happen if I just reduce that a little bit to like an 8.5 to 1 or something like that. And um, that's where my jack shaft idea is going to come in handy here. Uh, I was really glad that I set this engine far forward here because um, it, it just turns out to be a lifesaver because I've got all the room in the world to work with right here. I've just got some parts sitting here for demonstration, but this whole area is wide open. Not to mention everything past the running board, um, past the lip of the engine is wide open too. So I couldn't be happier with the amount of room I have to work with. Um, the only thing that's really in the way is the exhaust, and quite honestly, if I don't like that, that's gone in a second, or route it up and back and all kinds of stuff. I'm not attached to that by any means. Um, anyway, so jack shaft idea. That cart frame that I got had some, had some um, bearings in it. These are half-inch bearings. Now, I've got some piping already left over from the frame, and this is off the go-kart body right here. These guys are a little bit rusty, but I pounded the, um, the I took, really carefully took out the, um, the bearings out of this. There's two bearings, one sitting in here, one sitting on the other side. They're half an inch diameter. I took them out of the other one, there was two of these guys, and just, just spun them in my hand, cleaned them up a little bit. They seem perfectly fine. I don't think they've got any use out of them whatsoever. So my instinct at this point is just to make my own jack shaft. And as you can see right in front of us here, got the solution already made. I mean, um, just weld this body to this guy right here. Obviously, it's not going to be this long. Just here's a side profile for all you guys can see. Just run a bead along the side and the side just so it's nice and tight there. Um, everything is quarter inch to one eighth of an inch sheet metal, so it shouldn't be too tough for the, for the welder to penetrate. Both these things are going to get just smoking hot. But what I love about this is I've got this open channel, and this stuff is solid as heck. This is eighth of an inch square. Um, I'm just going to drill some holes just straight through, straight through the running board, and just bolt it up. Um, the beauty of that is, uh, you know, it's it's easy to weld, but the beauty of that is that I can just camber and swing the angle of this thing as I wish. Once I get one bolt in, you know, I'm just I'm good at that point. And um, you know, as long as it's done right, just two bolts and I'm done. So I figure, why not? The only thing I don't like is that the bearings are half an inch in diameter, inside diameter there. But at the same time, if I'm just going to have one sprocket sitting right next to one sprocket, there's really not going to be a whole lot of torsional energy on it. It's not going to be as much as if it was hanging off here. Like if it was a wheel that was hanging way out or something like that, at that point I'd have to do something about it. Um, the other thing I'm thinking about is, you know... Like, I'm not committed to these parts or anything. Everything in front of me is just kind of free leftovers. So if something happens, it, you know, even the gears are relatively cheap. I found an awesome place that's, like, selling sprockets for, like, ridiculously cheap. Like, $9 or something for a 20-tooth sprocket that fits a number 35 chain. Uh, the thing that I love about this is that I'm going to have, I'm going to get to get rid of this, this piece of crap right here. I did a really good job you know, beefing that up and installing that and everything, but this thing has never really ran perfectly, and the more I think about it, the more I realize on a bicycle, there's a sprocket here. There's not a stupid pulley, you know? That's why this is never really going to work right. I mean, I've had some good runs with it here, but it just seems like, you know, the thing's chewing itself to death, and I'm going to get maybe four or five miles out of it, and then she's going to die on me. And I don't want that. I want something more reliable. Now, the beauty of this jack shaft is you look at the angle here. Let's see if we can step up for a second. The, the kiss of death for this project for everybody has been this right here. This guy has just really been in the way. If you run a straight chain to a big gear, um, it's going to go right through that. And eventually, it'll just chainsaw it in half. I mean, that's just it's, that's a worse idea than having no pulley at all. So anyway, if I put the jack shaft right here, as long as I angle everything right, with a 12 tooth sprocket, I should have a, a straight line of sight to that gear. Uh, I don't know, it's gonna be kind of tough for you guys to see this, but um, the chain should be a direct line of sight, and as long as I keep that chain tension fairly tight, I should 
clear that gap right there. Um, worst case scenario, what I'll do is I'll just move it slightly forward a little bit here, a little bit closer to the gear. But all I'm trying to do is get is not contact that point. And that's why I like this project. Um, as far as bucks, I'm into this thing for about 280, 290 right now. As far as total out of cost with, between everything. And I'm happy about the budget. My original budget was like three, four hundred. So I, I, I've got a running model here. And um, it doesn't look like I'm going to have to buy too much more parts. It looks like I'm going to have to get a couple of sprockets and a jack shaft. I'm thinking about even going cheap on the jack shaft because, you know, it's just going to be two gears sitting right next to each other. I'm thinking about just cutting the keyway myself or even welding in a keyway and just getting some half inch, you know, bar stock at, you know, Home Depot for three dollars. But, uh, you know, if, if, if the jack shaft is cheap, I figure why not do it the right way. But everything's presenting itself just easy enough to do that. And I love the idea that I could do just do crazy stuff with gearing. Like, I have a ton of room here. I don't know how well you guys can see that. But almost if I wanted to cram another 72 tooth sprocket, I don't know if I could go that big. But I think I can get a 60 right in here. And just this area is just wide enough to handle that. And um, it's not too, too hanging off the bike, too. So I, you know, just do a shielding thing. I mean, the freaking uh, crankshaft is the widest thing out of the bike. So obviously all this is going to get covered by, like, you know, custom fabricated uh, steel, you know, chain guard, sprocket guard, whatever you want to call it. But I could put a nice fat 60 tooth gear. The only problem is I got to buy a hub to fit on that at that point. But I could go crazy with this thing. I can get a giant 60 tooth gear. Um, I could get like a moderate 30 tooth gear that rides right on um, right on a jack shaft, and I could go 12 to 30, which is you know roughly one to three, and then I could go another 12 or even lower than that, like a 10 to the 72, and that'll give me a real real massive gear. I'm just doing this in my head, but it sounds like that's 11 to one. Right now I'm running six to one, so I'm just kind of wondering what the torque would look like at that point. But I love it that once I have this thing set up. All I need is a chain tool, and then, you know, I can just play around with the gears. I just go this gear, that gear. Um, as far as the pedals go, looking at this, now keep in mind this is not going to be overhanging right here. This is relatively movable. I mean, I could reroute that somewhere if I'm creative enough, just up or forward. I like the idea of an air ram design where the, the faster I go, the more air gets packed into this thing. It just it's just in its generic position for a go-kart, go, mini bike, doesn't matter. Um, but I'm thinking, thankfully, and I didn't get rid of this crap, I'm thinking about just putting a pedal right here, something like that. And um, then, of course, a matching pedal on the other side. I still like the idea of plugging them in, unplugging them. But I'm thinking about just putting it like that, and... The only thing is the chain's going to have to make a little bit of an angled jump to that sprocket right there. But it's bicycle chain, so it's relatively easy to mess around with. It's not sensitive. I figure if I get the tension really good, really tight, I should have minimal issues with it. Because bike chain is designed to be turned at weird angles and this kind of thing. And to be honest with you, it's not going to be used. But I would retain that 3 to 1, that you know factory bicycle um, gear ratio that would make it very drivable with sprockets pedals would be, you know, behind the engine. I'd end up standing on the pedals while I'm pedaling it, but it's, you know, that would make it a very functional pedal system. That would be almost exactly as functional as it was originally when I got the bike. So psyched about that, not to mention that's just a simple idea, and it cost me nothing to really do that. The only thing I'd really need is like another jack shaft, but I have one already, so it, it just seems like the logical way to do things. It just seems like a really, really simple solution to all this. Plus, I have that, that one-way gear, um, that freewheel, as we call it, which means as the bike is moving, these guys are going to stay perfectly still. Um, they're going to stay perfectly still. There's no reason for them to be moving because they're attached to this freewheel. I'm really glad that I didn't monkey with the freewheel too much here. I spent about five seconds trying to take it off and then decided it wasn't worth my time. So, um, it's coming together. Coming together here. And... Um, yeah, really satisfied with the whole situation. Looking at about another week or so to get the, the sprockets I want. I'm probably going to order that jack shaft, just the shaft itself. But gears, another 
whatever, 20, 25 bucks. Jack shaft, probably yeah, 20 bucks or something. So another 40, 50 bucks. But at that point, I should be really good to go. Um, I still need that gas tank. I'm still running the Road Warrior style gas tank here. And I still have the doorbell engine cutoff switch. Uh, I'm really close to just breaking down and buying the, um, the throttle control off those motorized bicycle websites and just using one of those things. Because I figure, why not, you know? I, I want something that looks nice, and this doesn't look nice. This is Road Warrior style. But it works. It, it really does work. Um, just ergonomically speaking, I love the idea that I just that it's in the perfect spot for the thumb. Anybody can find that, you know, throttle up, uh oh, bad things, and just tap on that. I like that. That's about it. Um, what is today, the 30th here? It should be... Yeah, by the next two weeks here, I should have everything just done on this and um, ready for paint and ready to roll. Hopefully by then my license plates will be coming in, but we'll find out uh, in the mail. That's about, it. That, uh, that's about it for now, YouTube. Anybody has any suggestions about what to do with this thing, let me know. Down the line, um, obviously I'm going to put the gas tank there. I like the idea of a like, little storage, a little lockable storage thing right here so I can throw my wallet, cell phone, car keys, whatever, in there. Um, almost immediately, as soon as I take this thing out, I'm going to put some kind of uh, actual key ignition, you know, up here, something like that. It's not going to be, for all you that know how to use it, you know, a four-cycle, you know, go-kart engine, you're pretty much going to be able to figure out how to hotwire this thing. But it's not for everybody who's savvy. It's for everybody that just like, oh, look at that bike. I want to take that thing. Not to mention it'd be really stupid for me not to just put a chain around this. And uh, that's about it. And uh, oh, looking at the front wheel here, I'm getting a lot of wobble. It's not from the bearings or anything like that. It's just the wheel itself has been, I don't know, hit or something. Um, luckily, it's just a wheel. And I can, you know, go down to, you know, bike shop and get, a, I think this is a 24, and get a 24 with, you know, whatever, or even just scour YouTube, uh, excuse me, just scour eBay or Craigslist, somebody wants to throw away a bicycle or something. It's an easily replaceable part. The brakes are squeaking quite a bit. I don't know how to, really don't know how to fix that. If anybody has any input, I might just, just search that one on Google, how to fix that squeak. That's about it for now. It's coming together, it's nice and fast, but I want to see what happens if I get it just a little bit faster off the line.